Ukraine Today is joined by the director of the Swiss Cooperation Office Ukraine, Mr. Guido Boltrani. Mr. Boltrani, welcome to Ukraine Today. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Boltrani, I understand that uh, your office is working on several projects in Ukraine. Uh, can we briefly discuss what are these projects? Yes, um, maybe let me start with an overview. My office uh, is representing the Swiss government. We are what is called a donor office in Ukraine. So we are steering, coordinating and ma um, managing various projects, around 23 at the moment, in four sectors. The sectors are health, then we have energy efficiency, economic development, there we focus mainly on deregulation, support to sm small and medium enterprises in the agricultural sector in particular. Then we have the sector of decentralization, including e-governance, and at the moment we have also some humanitarian programs. Um, can we talk a bit more about um, your initiatives uh, in decentralization? Uh, what exactly do you do and uh, what is the, the, the current status of your projects? Well, we have uh, projects in different um, maturity of their life. We have some projects that are going on since years. One of them is called Despro, which is meanwhile quite a trademark in Ukraine. If we speak about decentralization, Despro stands for decentralization support to Ukraine. We want, for instance, to mobilize citizens uh, in order that they are also actively involved in improving these services. So we have a process which is called social mobilization where the citizens identify the main problems. For instance, there is a problem with water supply in these and these districts. They put together, let's say, a, a body that is then able to manage the project. They even collect part of the funds. And then they cooperate with the local authorities who have also to play a role to co-fund the projects and they solve let's say, the problem together. And this approach has proven to be very effective uh, for the communities also in order to solve other projects, pros, problems. We have seen, for instance, that uh, once they have started to solve problems related to water, maybe one year later they, uh, they tackle the issue of gas. So gasification. So it proves to be what we call a sustainable approach. This is one project, then we cooperate with the Council of Europe in the area of decentralization. Here we cooperate both in strengthening capacities, knowledge of mayors, uh, health, village heads, or all the local authorities to implement certain tools of the Council of Europe related, for instance, to uh, public ethics or uh, financial management at the local level. And we, again, also here cooperate with uh, national authorities to improve the regulatory framework. We have a project which is different, working with schools, school directors, school teachers, also local authorities for implementing the approach of democracy in schools, something which is maybe abstract, but we believe that it is very important that democracy is already presented to youngsters while they are very young, so that is practiced practically really in the school class. You, you were saying that um, you were focusing on um, activating the communities to, to start working uh, themselves, start creating something something for themselves, start solving their problems. And this is also something which uh, we have been talking to the director of the DESPRO project. Mm -hmm. they, they have uh, several uh, pilot projects uh, where they were working with the local communities. How are, uh, how are these um, innovative approaches are being accepted by the local communities. How are, are, are they well received, uh, both by the communities and by, by, by the government? Is, isn't it something, because this is obviously something very new for them. Mm, absolutely, this is a very pertinent question. As I say, the project is pretty old, so it started in 2007. And I wasn't in Ukraine, I arrived in 2011, but I was told that at the very beginning, the communities, for instance, were very skeptical towards the approach. They were thinking, for instance, there were people collecting money, trying to collect money to improve uh, the water system. They were thinking it's a kind of financial pyramid uh, scheme, and then their money would disappear. So there was a maybe sound, I would say, skeptical skepticism at the beginning is something new. Who are these guys that they want, want to promote this and this approach? 
And meanwhile, we have successfully implemented the approach in uh, over 70 villages. So now we see the contrary. Uh, in the last couple of years, it happened that we, we are sticking to certain regions for efficiency reasons. We cannot cover the entire Ukraine, so uh, we work in five regions at the moment. And what we have seen is that certain regions say just uh, share with us the tools, the approach, and then they started in certain villages to do it themselves. Exactly the same without any financial support from us. So they managed to do it with their funds and the funds of the local authorities. So what we see is that the, the approach after starting maybe in a, in a, a bit with flat way has picked up and at the moment is very well received. The same a bit with local authorities. So at the beginning, uh, maybe it was something um, unusual, social mobilization, maybe the the old uh, way of ruling was not that uh, used to it. But th then with the time, uh, they saw that it's helping also them, the relations with the citizens. Um, they were also appreciating the citizens became active, made, making proposals to them, saying these are our priorities. So these kind of feedbacks I got from certain um, local authorities. Well, obviously for these uh, reforms to be fully implemented and to fully work um, on, on, on full speed, um, a certain um, set of laws uh, need to be adopted, some laws need to be changed, new laws to be adopted. How do you see the, uh, the um, reformist activities of the Ukrainian government on the on the legislative base absolutely yes it is clear that in order to have a full-fledged decentralization reform you need to change uh, the regulatory framework even the constitution as we know um, my assessment is that uh, the government has uh, worked in the last year with um, a certain intensity i mean there is a concept of reforms which has been approved already in april last year so pretty soon after the maidan events and based on this concept then certain Certain pieces of legislation have been elaborated and also approved. Um, we can uh, refer, for instance, to the law on uh, intermunicipal cooperation, which allows uh, community to cooperate on solving certain issues, which are maybe costly and which small communities cannot solve alone. Solid waste management is an example. Uh, or the recently approved law on voluntary amalgamations of communities, which is also important in order to create a bit bigger communities which have then the capacity in all senses, including the financial sense, to, to provide good services to their citizens. And last but not least, also uh, the new tax uh, and budget code foresee more competences, financial competences, at least for larger cities. So changes have been implemented. There are, of course, certain limitations because uh, for wide reaching uh, changes the constitution has to be uh, to be amended so the process has started now we understand of course also that there is uh, in general a, a sense of impatience in the population which is absolutely legitimate after maybe years of, of, and years where changes uh, we are very slow if at all but uh, I have to say from my point of view things are moving uh, and uh, are moving in the right direction uh, what we think it's also impo uh, important or we where we are uh, very much willing to support the authorities is also in making these changes what we say we, we use the word inclusive so to discuss at least the major changes with all main stakeholders including with the regions with the associations of cities of regions of villages etc you said that you were happy with uh, the fact that changes are happening that uh the government has the will to uh, make these changes happen. Are you satisfied with the pace of these changes? Well, with regard to the pace, you have uh, to balance a bit. On the one side, as I say, there is a, a legitimate wish to move fast because change, there is a window of opportunity, we all understand it, to introduce these changes fast. On the other side, as I said before, we, uh, we consider that long-lasting changes, which are really long-lasting beneficially for all, uh, should be discussed. So there is a certain need to allocate a certain 
space or a certain time also for these discussions. And there is, a, in particular for the constitutional reform, I mean, this is probably the most important change uh, that uh, can be introduced at the level, at the legislative level. So here, um, the authorities uh, have the difficult task to find the balance between going fast and on the other side, including the stakeholders in these changes, which are so important. Well, obviously, more authority means also more responsibility. Um, when talking to the local authorities on the ground, uh, do you see the willingness and do you see whether they are ready to take up uh, these more responsibilities on themselves? Well, uh, it's difficult to, uh, to give a general answer. As you know, there are more than 11,000 villages in Ukraine. There are uh, almost 500 rayons. So the, the answers probably differ from, from one to the other. Yeah, but those who you general, were with. Yeah, in general, I would say yes, absolutely. There is a bit an issue of capacity. So, uh, of course, in very, very small villages, um, it is a challenge or it might be a challenge maybe to deal with new responsibilities, tasks, higher budgets. And this is why part of the reform is what I mentioned before, this territorial amalgamation consolidation, which consists in creating bigger, a bit bigger communities that then have the capacity in, uh, at the level also of, uh, of human resources to deal with uh, these new responsibilities. And it is a process that has happened in many, many countries in Europe, including in Switzerland, in Switzerland on a very voluntary basis, but still the number of communes has reduced from around 3,000 to 2,200. Um, we have communes with a few um, dozens of inhabitants. They are not able then to provide, obviously, good services to their citizens. So this goes handy and the willingness is there but there is a need to strengthen capacities and for these also to a certain extent uh, to change certain local structures. Um, we also understand from talking to various experts that one of the big challenges of the decentralization reform in Ukraine is uh, information campaign. Uh, there isn't enough information for the people on the ground to explain, to tell them what, what this is all about, what their benefits will be. Uh, do you agree with that, uh, with that uh, statement? Yeah. Yes, I fully agree and I would also uh, like to add that through one of our projects as PRO, we are also supporting the authorities in informing the population about uh, the decentralization reform because it's true, decentralization is something abstract. I mean, if we speak about health, about education, we all can imagine what's about. Um, but decentralization, yes, we have all a vague idea, but it's not something so concrete uh, that we can touch. So there is, in the, and these processes of amalgamation or budget decentralization, these are very technical. Um, it is important to explain in simple terms what's about. Uh, we have, uh, the Swiss government through Despro, we have, for instance, developed some cartoons that explain in simple ways. I, I have seen it, I have not understood everything. It was in Ukrainian as it, as it should be, but uh, I understood most even without understanding uh, the language. So I think these are really very much suitable for informing. And besides that, of course, uh, we also organize um, discussion roundtables in regions. We have already organized some of them to discuss with uh, stakeholders, with village heads, some experts, the private sector, the civil society, what are their expectations with regard to decentralization reform, what they can expect from the central government. So normally there is uh, also there are representatives from Kiev participating in these roundtables. So this dialogue also helps to clarify expectations and also to clarify what will be concretely uh, the main changes uh, which are upcoming. Do you receive any feedback? Do you have any surveys of how effective is this information campaign, uh, whether the awareness of the population has risen following the introduction of this campaign of DESPRO? Um, I don't have data on these. I have seen some surveys in the past, but not conducted by us. We are planning, it's a very good question, because we are planning for the future to do so and uh, also to see how this decentralization reform will then be perceived by the citizens, if it will be perceived as beneficial 
what we all hope or not, or to which extent we expect that, for instance, the level of trust uh, in the local authorities will increase through it. There are certain surveys, uh, for instance, speaking about the level of trust in different level of authorities that are conducted annually, and uh, they show in the last year a rather constant pattern. But we have to say, um, if I remember well the data, that uh, local authorities are among those authorities that enjoy already now uh, a relatively high level of trust. Well, let's hope that they uh, will continue enjoying this uh, high level of trust and that uh, the people on the ground will get more and more information about this decentralization reform. Mr. Beltrani, many thanks for coming to us and talking to us. Uh, this was Volodymyr Suhu for Ukraine Today, together with the director of Swiss Corporation Office Ukraine, Mr. Guido Beltrani. Thank you for watching us.